Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new kit to preview for you guys today. This is the brand new 135th scale rye field model Panzer III J. And what's a little bit different about this Panzer III is that this one has a full interior inside of it. In fact, um, I'll let you see a little edge of the box right there. Really cool. The fighting compartment, the engine, all of that kind of stuff is all duplicated inside here in 35th scale. And it's really cool to see the 35th scale uh, tanks World War II with the full interiors. Uh, I know it's a lot of work and not all of you I want to build a million of those and neither do I. I mean a couple of them is good. But it's good to see the different variations in it. So we've done a, a King Tiger, a Panther, a, uh, a regular Tiger, Panzer IV, and now we can do the Panzer III. And you can start to see how the different fighting compartments and all that stuff look differently. Now, I was lucky enough to been inside a few of the German World War II tanks, and I have to tell you, they are super, super cramped. So I unfortunately didn't get to go inside the Panzer III, uh, but, and hopefully I get to down the road, but getting smaller and smaller and smaller, I, I can't imagine how little room there must have been inside here. So when you build up the interior like that, you can really kind of see, man, they, they don't have a lot, a lot of room in there. Plus there's live ammunition everywhere inside, so you got that fun fact thrown in there as well. So there's a decent number of parts inside here because of the interior. And then also there is a new aftermarket set available from uh, Ryfield model. This is uh, some extra photo etch. Plus this is something new they're doing as well. They have some new high resin, high resolution, excuse me, 3D parts that they're including as well. And really nice looking stuff. It, it, you'll see it more and more in their kits. In fact, the last couple of kits I've previewed have all had some type of the high resolution 3D printing in it and very, very nicely done on it. So like I said, both of these are available in our website and our store, andyshhq.com for the website. And actually this is the, the kit that I was going to preview a little bit earlier. Uh, this was one of the kits that we were going to get an early group um, that was on the container ship that uh, lost almost 2,000 containers back in December, I think it was. And I have a quick video that I had from a few days ago that you can go and check out if you want some more information about that. But uh, very excited to share this one with you. So let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at this big kit. And when I say big kit, I know the box isn't like massive, but you got to remember, there's a Panzer III inside of here. Granted, it has the full interior, but this is the size of a, a really large, like, uh, King Tiger box. First, I'm just going to just quickly show you the, uh, the side view on here. I like showing those pictures of what the interiors of these look like, especially on these cutaway views. And you can see it's quite a bit different than the, uh, the other interior kits that we've built over the years. So now let's take a look at the plastic. So let's start off with the lower hull first and foremost. Uh, as you can see, of course, it's not a bathtub style hull and that is mainly because of the interior kits have so much extra detail that if you know when we flip this over, if this was a bathtub style, all of this extra detail would not be in here if it was molded with the side still in place there. So fully uh, fully understandable why it's separate pieces and as you can see here there is a lot of extra detail on the inside of this as well as in the bottom down here then we're gonna flip this back over to the other side and show you all of the detail on the bottom down here plus this is where the turret ring is and part of the upper hull and then just some various other pieces like the covers for the uh, the final drive here and some of the other components for the upper part of the hull. We've got a lot of plastic to go through here. Uh, this is the, the fenders, of course, and you'll also notice here that there's slide molding on this sprue that has the tools on it, so you see the vents, hopefully, right there pretty well. The vents are all slide molded, as well as this stowage box. And then we rotate this right here, this is part of the, the jack. It too has also all been slide molded right in through there. Put this back down here. And then we have 
the typical curled up cables, which I think has been in every single Panzer III I've ever seen, are never individual cables, always the curled up plastic ones like this. Slightly different shapes on each one, but it's kind of funny how they're always done that way and never giving you the brackets with the uh, the cable. But they, they actually look fine, so I don't have a problem with that. And then, like I was saying, some of the other, the, the other tools in here, part of the machine gun, the uh, fire extinguisher, stuff like that. I'm going to pull these two pieces out right now, too, and show them to you. They're not really on a sprue. They're kind of separated here. So we've got our rear engine deck. Get you a little close-up view of that. Just like that. And then our turret as well here. Just see close-up of the weld seams. I know those are always really important. That appears to be pretty nice right down there. Whoop. Rotate it around, come to this side. There we go. Next up, let's see what we have here. Here's part of the turret. Uh, so we have our rear turret basket back over here, the bottom of the turret, and then things like the uh, front mantle, matlet there, and parts of the gun. Then plus the inside here where we have the basket to catch the uh, spent ammunition shells and some of the other components there. There is some slide molding done on the side here. And this is for part of the gun. Also here is the main gun right here as well. It too is slide molded. Hollowed out barrel there. And actually so is the machine gun too right in through there. So that's becoming very, very popular to uh, to do even the little machine guns from Ryefield in that. It's a nice little feature because I don't know about you guys, but every time I've tried to drill those out, I can never hit dead center to save my life. So I'm very happy that they're doing something like that in there. Now well, let's grab, we got two sprues of this. I'll put this one off to the side here. Here is our wheel and lower suspension sprue. So obviously there is the uh, lower suspension arms right here, all of our road wheels, our drive sprocket, our idler wheel for the back, and then the return rollers are right up inside here. There is a little bit of slide molding in this. Let's see what those are. Not quite sure what those are. Probably part of, of the, uh, the shock absorber of some kind. Looks like there's a pin that you would attach it to, but we can find that out later. And I'll let you see a close-up of all these little parts, how detailed they are. I'll flip the sprue over here as well. Show you close-up of the road wheels. Return rollers. Let's see if we can get it to focus there. Oops, sorry about that. See some of the printing, really crisp printing on there. Here are those two shocks that go in the front of the vehicle. Even those little wing nuts right there, look at those. Wow, those are really nicely detailed. Anything else cool on here? We'll give you a quick little close up of the bolts on the drive sprocket and the idler. Very nice. Next up. We have some of our internal parts here. Uh, let's first of all look, no slide molding on here, but it looks like here are part of the radiators for the inside there. I'm assuming this is a fuel tank right here. I'm not super familiar of the internal parts of a Panzer III, but uh, that looks like that would probably be part of the uh, the fuel tank. And it looks like we have some of the, the other parts of the radiator, which we're gonna give you a close up right now on that. I'll let you take a closer look at each one of these parts. Now, with this Panzer III coming into production, you can see some of the plumbing there too. How long do you think it's going to be before we get a storm Geschutz out of them with a full interior? Uh, I obviously the turret and all that stuff gets gets deleted, but I'm assuming that the fighting compartment is going to be very similar, and of course the engine compartment as well. I want you to see quickly. Not too much detail on the other side. This is all the back side of all that stuff. So let's hope. Um, Many of you guys may know, may not know, Stormgeschütz is one of my favorite vehicles from World War II, so I would really like to see an internal one on that one go. 
Here we're going to take a look at, looks like some of the plumbing that will go inside the vehicle. Some of the pipes. And I'm not going to claim to know what every one of these pieces are right here until we actually get to the instructions. And even once I have the instructions, I probably will not know what some of these pieces are. But uh, look to be nice detail on there. Next up, we'll put this one down here. So you, first of all, uh, no slide molding on this. More internal parts. This looks like the, uh, the, the floor to the fighting compartment. And I'll just kind of give you a close-up of all these and let, let you see what you think of the detail on this. There are the radios right there. I can recognize that part at least. And it looks like the instrument panel for the driver. Part of the uh, shell stowage case. There is an MG, um, excuse me, MP40 mounted in its um, holder. Some more of the ammunition stowage. Very, very nice. Now, the next sprue I'm going to show you right here, you actually get two of these. And this is going to have our radiator fans right here. Flip that over to show you the rest of the detail. And then all of the ammunition. So you get a decent amount of ammunition. And as you can see as we go down the line here, each one of them, each one of those little sections is a different type of ammunition. So you get quite a few. Plus, down here, these are all the uh, ammo bags for the, uh, the MG and some accessories like holster, canteen, and like I said, you get two packs of that. So you're going to be painting a lot of ammunition on this kit. And here we go. This sprue right here has quite a bit of slide molding on it here. Let's flip this over and make it easier on it. More internal parts as you can see. And um, let's just first just go right to the slide molding to show you how that looks. And get to the actual part itself. More slide molding right here. It's kind of cool that I mean the way they can do this slide molding now. But think about how you would have had to have molded that many years ago. Uh, not the same. We've got our battery pack right down here. And all kinds of other little internal parts. Lots and lots of internal parts. And this sprue. This is always one I'm always excited to show. Because this is something I wish they would even just sell separately in the future. Are the engines on these? I, I think it would be kind of cool to do up an engine of this. You know, just for display purposes only. Not even necessarily put it inside the vehicle. So here we have all of our engine block. There is a little bit of slide molding on here uh, for this portion. And then we're just going to show you a close up of all of these. So we've got our exhaust. Some of the plumbing for the engine. Some of the belts. The engine block. Those slide molded parts we just showed you. And that's about it on this one. I don't know if there's any detail on the other side. Probably not. This is all stuff that you're going to glue together. So there's your engine sprue as well. Lots of detail in that. I'm going to put this away and I'm going to show you the tracks next. Okay, I had to dig those tracks out of a couple of other bags that are in there. And we're just going to zoom right in and let you take a look at those. So right off, pretty nice looking detail. They're slide molded, so as you can see here, we have holes on the side, and the horns are hollow like they should be. And if there are holes in the side of the track, that means that they're going to be workable because they have included these pens with them right here as well. And these are the correct distance apart, so it's just a matter of chopping that sprue in half and putting a couple of tracks together and inserting those pins inside, and then we have workable tracks. So like I was telling you earlier, you get a big bag of those. You do have a few little connection points for cutting them off. I would not call that uh, very, very difficult at all. Put that away in there. And then you get, of course, a couple of bags of these pins. Now, in that bag of pins, whoops, 
we also get all kinds of other accessories. So here are all those pins I was talking about. We have our decals. And as you can see, the majority of those decals are on there are for the shells because the shells always have lots of uh, markings on it. Plus a like a hand painted 55 or maybe just a 5. Maybe it's on that. And then, of course, some other uh, vari variations of markings for your vehicle. Um, our clear parts for the, all the vision blocks, things like that. Not much to see there. But I am going to show you this right here without trying to blind you too much. Here is our photo etch for all of our grills. And a few other little accessory pieces there. And then we'll flip this over and a few other pieces of photo etch in there. And then this. Oh, th I know what this is. This is the uh, track block. So this is the thing that you're going to line your track up on, and that way you get a perfect track, and then you'll be able to slide those pins directly in the side. So it's a little jig for putting it together there. There is one spring. Now, anytime there's one spring like that, it's probably for the barrel, I'm assuming, because if it was a suspension piece, you'd have one for each side. But one spring inside there, and a whole big bag of poly caps. So those are all the accessory pieces that are in that, that separate bag there. And the only last thing I need to show you now are, are the instructions and show you how the, how the whole kit will go together. Actually, before I show you guys the instructions on this kit, I wanted to show you the Upgrade Solution Series for the Panzer 3J. This is um, a little box of aftermarket parts that you, you don't absolutely have to have, but some upgraded parts for your Panzer uh, 3J, and including some of these new high-resolution 3D printed pieces. And here we have cable eyes and clamps, as well as a fire extinguisher to show off in there too. And the cable eyes, well actually, Let's just show you the parts instead here. They come in a nice little box to protect them. Let's see if we can pop this open here and then carefully take this out. And I'm going to get you in there close. You see those cable or those clamps for the tools? All of this edge piece is going to be broken out out of the way. This is just there to protect it. But you get some, some extra clamps and stuff inside there. Some really nice detailed stuff. To, uh, to really highlight your Panzer IV. Excuse me, Panzer III, not Panzer IV, Panzer III. So you get that component inside. You get some more cable right here, which is obviously for your tow cables here, as well as another piece of photo etch here. And these are some more stowage boxes and a few other components. Yep, just one piece on there. And it's it's a nice little kit right there. It's under $15 that if you do want it, it's there. It's available for you, and you can get it. But you don't absolutely need it either. The kit's going to build pretty nicely just on its own. So now let's take a look at the instructions. So let's take a look at the instructions now. But before we do, this is a perfect opportunity to ask you guys to do me a favor. If you guys enjoy this video and enjoy videos like this, please go ahead and smash that like button right now. I'll wait. I'm not doing anything else right now. I'll wait for you to smash that like button. It really does help the channel out and the videos. And if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe as well. And that way you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. Now. In the, the, uh, the comments on the last couple of preview kit videos I've done, a few of you have asked that I show every page of the instructions. Now, I do listen to you guys, so I am going to show you that. Now, I'm not going to take forever. Don't worry. I'm not, it's not going to be 30 minutes of me showing you instructions. We're going to take just a brief little look at each one of the pages, and if you want to get a closer look at it, freeze frame right then and there, and then you can. So let's go right to the instructions here. You can see we've got a complete breakdown of all of the parts that are in this kit by Sprue. And I love this. You guys know that. We've got blue for new parts coming on so we don't miss any of the parts on there. And also red shows you glue points to attach stuff. So just let's just enjoy each one of these pages right here. I'll move my hand for a second and then let you see how each one goes together. And I do like these color ones too, where they show the whole piece built. That's very helpful too, because sometimes you look at something and you go, I don't know what they're trying to get at. And then you see it all built and you go, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Some of the internal parts down there.
There is that track block showing you how that all works together there. Of course, all the engine hatches are openable. So if you want to show off a little of the, uh, the couple of weeks of detailing you've just done, you've got the ability to do that. All the fenders, road wheels. Putting the tracks into place. Okay, we're coming to the end right now. Here we've got some of the uh, the inside shots of the vehicle. And then finally some camouflage variations that you can put on here with the breakdown of what color using Mr. Hobby Color Paints. Oh, it is. Okay, that was a 5, not a 55. So a 5 on it. So it looks like there's four different markings on it. And finally, there's an, a, a view of the entire inside of the vehicle, which they also give you as a, uh, a separate piece here, too, for painting. So they break down all of the colors on there as well. So there it is. Uh, what do you guys think? Please go ahead and leave a comment down below in the, uh, in the comment section. And if you have any other things that you'd like to see me do in the future, or like something you want to have me change on how I do this, please go ahead and put that down there as well. I do, like I said, do read the, uh, the comments on it there. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.